So the big fat lie, right? So fat is going to make you fat. Fat is going to clog your arteries. It's going to cause <laughs> it's going to cause atherosclerosis, right? Um, it's just fat is just unhealthy. That's what we're told. But we're fatter than we've ever been. So every single patient that walks into my practice is confused. Absolutely confused. And honestly, most physicians are confused too. All right. If we right now take a room with 100 physicians and ask them the role of fat, they will tell you exactly that. Fat causes heart disease. There's issues with fat. It's not healthy. It clogs your arteries, right? So the common dogma that we hear today. But then again, everything that we've been doing as a society and as a medical community has just not been working. So I'm proposing that we've got it backwards. So how did we get here? Well, in the 1950s, we first realized that coronary heart disease and heart attacks are massively on the rise. So mid-century, all of a sudden, we're becoming aware, wait a minute, a lot of people are dying from heart attacks, a lot of people are having atherosclerosis. What's going on, right? This is something new. This is not you know, something that we've dealt with in the past. And uh, so along came Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was a very prominent scientist in the, uh, in the you know, uh, mid-century, 20th century. And he basically um, did a big study and he correlated a linear relationship between fat and heart disease between countries in the world. And he showed this linear progression and he, he, he you know, spoke at all the symposiums and this was just taken up with ferocity. Government, medical community, we have the solution, fat causes heart attack, thank you very much, the holy grail, we've got it, and they ran with it. All right. But what mo a lot of people did not know, if you go to the next slide, is that he only included data from six countries so that he could show a linear progression. But he actually had data from 22 countries. So he left out about 16 countries. And, uh, so, oops, what happened here? So, um, another scientist in the Fat and Diet Mortality of Heart Disease, he wrote in his, um, in his article, since no information is given by Keyes on how or why the six countries were selected, it is necessary to investigate the association between dietary fat and heart disease mortality in all countries for which information is available. And what he did is he showed in a graph all 22 countries and there was no linear relation between heart disease and fat intake whatsoever. So there's no correlation. But by that time, the entire industry, medical community, government was on the wagon and ran with it, publicized it. Nobody was backing down from that anymore. So they ran with it. But his colleagues, John Yutkin, um, was, which was a PhD um, <coughs> for the Queen Elizabeth College, showed research in The Lancet that there was no correlation, there was no significant correlation between heart disease and fat, but there actually was data for heart disease and sugar intake. But again, by that time, you know, we kind of like went off and by the um, 1961, Ansel Keys became the editor of circulation of the, on the cover of Times Magazine and the cholesterol myth, as I call it, was born. And so for the last 50 years, this dogma has been taught in medical schools and everywhere else, but there actually is no real scientific evidence that actually depicts as fat being the major cause of heart disease. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of industry right now that is no longer interested in changing this because it's a big industry, right? So by 1977, the Senate Committee, led by George McGovern, released its dietary goals for the United States. Okay? And without any evidence to support their conclusions, the committee identified fat as the culprit for causing obesity and heart disease. Okay, so again, you know, in 1974, we came out with the first food pyramid, which was heavily focused on eating a lot of grains, focused on light fat, a lot of fruit and dairy, which had to be low fat, vegetables and lean protein. All right, so fat was just out of the picture everywhere. And in 2011, we've now released the Choose My Plate, which is pretty much still the same as the food pyramid, still a lot of grains, still no fats, um, really not much change there. More vegetables, that's the only thing they changed.